everybody. Happy New Week. Uh, and no, I haven't forgotten about you guys. <laughs> it's just been school holidays and um, I've had a few weeks off doing my interviews, but I have my gorgeous two times published author, Sandy Make, right next to me all, all the way from Canada, her Sunday evening, uh, joining us for this morning's interview um, and talking to us about her second freshly hot off the press uh, book, The Ungracious Daughter. Show us the book, um, Sandy. I know you're going through final proofing stages, so there's a few little stickers <laughs> stickers there in the book. Uh, oh, there is. She's even got the cover framed, you guys. Um, and do you want to show us uh, the first book as well, which is um, The Unwanted Wife? I'm just going to put up a live also on my phone to make sure that I can see the comments. There it is. The Unwanted Wife was book one. Sandy and I, have we known each other for about um, two or three years coming up soon now? Yeah. 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 And, and actually, you guys, Sandy's writing her third book in two weeks' time at the May retreat, which is happening also. So um, she's on this massive journey to you know, change the life of a lot of women. And I'm going to actually, Sandy, let me introduce you properly with your with your bio and then we're going to talk about this um, the second book because if you didn't catch, guys, the interview um, that I did with Sandy about a year ago on The Unwanted Wife, you can just look up. You can even just put Sandy's and my name into YouTube and it'll pop up um, or just follow up with me and I'll send you a recording of that one. But we're going to be talking about the second book. So Sandy is the author of The Unwanted Wife and The Ungracious Daughter. And she'll tell us in, later on in the interview what the third one's going to be. There's stories of arranged marriage, violence and abuse. Sandy's story is similar to um, when she was married to a stranger at 18. She was the target of domestic violence and abuse, yet she had the courage and strength to survive and transform her life to become the woman she is today. Sandy shares her journey a true testament to the power of a woman. She shares her powerful and inspiring story as a call to action to women who face similar battles. She's a strong advocate against domestic violence and abuse and provides consultations for women who are dealing with domestic trauma. She's also a strong advocate for living a very healthy lifestyle. Also founder of the STCC Dance Academy. That's where she's been all day today, uh, teaching people dance. As Sandy volunteers with youths and adults, in her community sharing her love for the form, art form of dance and is a proud recipient of several civic and volunteer awards in the community. And I know you also run a massive events as well um, around this that you put on, which is you're, you're multifaceted, Sandy. I love getting to know you and, you know, I definitely have a trip planned to to come to Canada and you'll be one of my stops to, to meet you. <laughs> I love it. So good morning or good evening for you. So tell me, um, tell me where how where the ungracious daughter fits into the unwanted uh, wife, and how does it does it flow on from that? So the un the ungracious daughter is a prequel of the unwanted wife, and it tells yeah. about um, it talks about sexual abuse as a child, and it's very similar to my own childhood and to my own story, and it talks mm -hmm. about uh, sexual you know sexual abuse as a child betrayal, um, uh, love, and deceit, yeah. and what we perceive to be love, and probably not what love is all about, um, disloyalty, and even attempted murder. Wow. Wow. So it's a, it's like kind of what happened before, and then then it's um, unwanted wife's the next one. And is the next one after the unwanted wife? It's actually a prequel of the young gracious daughter. Oh, it's going back wow. even further to my uh, to my four uh, forefathers, like my 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 grandmother and and her sisters and things like that. So that one goes even further back into um, our our history of um, right. of of domestic violence. Yeah, yeah. I love love it. You're writing everything backwards. Usually, most people right forwards but they're like kind of, uh, looking at the history and the the patterns or the imprinting is that what the kind of it's that's how it explains yes, where it's exactly. all from? Yeah. yeah and i would want to say it's almost like footprints that we leave but not always the best footprints that we're leaving for our um our children mm. it, 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 and um i met i met someone the other day and she was talking to me about um she's an empath so she talks about healing and now she, uh, she's going back into healing 
in the womb. Mm, so it yeah. got me thinking about these things and how we don't actually, um, we can't heal our, our, and live a, um, a great life if we don't heal I'm from within. Sorry, I don't know what it was. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the the interview replaying yeah no, all good um yeah it's it's so interesting because i know um there's generational imprinting that you don't think it's happening but it is and on such deep levels um that it has been discovered that then you know you kind of even as much as you try to be an amazing parent there's so many other things that i guess go through the history so within the ungracious daughter what what would the reader get out of you know um reading that one so it also talks about like shame and betrayal of family loyalties and um and you know like uh, going back into discovering where women in our in our family in in my family have stayed strong and faced all the mountain problems but still comes out um as 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 a great like a great mother or a great um daughter or a great sister even even going through all these things coming out as um like I have a lot of respect for my mother um uh, although um you know she's been through a lot herself my grandmother has been through a lot her herself they still were, was able to provide for us and give us a good lifestyle even though um there was so much betrayals and so much deceit and so much family um secrets yes we still did not have a bad life you know what i mean yes yeah in a sense so where what... okay so they did not know that 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 i was being abused right but on the other hand uh we i had a lot of fun with my grandmother i had a lot of um great things that my mom did with us so you know it was almost like <laughs> you don't know right it's like this yeah so where did the name the ungracious daughter come from so the ungracious daughter i always thought that i was ungracious for being um for telling the truth for talking about mm -hmm. the truth and for telling what had happened to me um uh, as a child and it, growing up i was uh, uh sexually abused by my uncle and mm -hmm. um and so I thought because I told the truth that that I was being ungracious to my family but mm -hmm. um when when I started writing the book and and as you read about the book it starts off um me or or the person like like I didn't really write it as me I had to write it as a third person yes. party as you know um mm -hmm. and I continued that from the unwanted wife to the ungracious daughter I continued with the same um characters in in yeah. in in the second in the second book because it's a prequel and it tells about um about maya who's the character in this uh in this story and in the previous story tell about her talking like healing and healing in in a sense where she told she told her story to her husband or to her future husband yes. at the time and so it's going back and forth between telling the story and going back to the past. So so it also while stuck telling her story to Scott, um, the the whole thing changed towards being talking about sexual abuse to talking about family betrayals and talking about mm -hmm. um what had happened as as how she remembered it as a child, what had happened to her parents, to her sisters to her uncles and and so that ungracious daughter came from Maya wondering is she the ungracious daughter is it somebody else you know it could it be her sister could it be somebody else right so the ungracious yes. daughter actually should have a question mark at the back of it you know at the end of wow. at the end of the sentence where it says the ungracious daughter I should have put a question mark yeah like who is yeah who, who really like, is the ungracious daughter yeah I love that. And I love you created these awesome little trailer videos that they're, they're so, um, they're so interesting, like, you know, in terms of the mystery behind all of it, because there is a bit of like, kind of, as you say, it's, it's mysterious. Even the cover as we can, we saw it, you lifted it up. It's quite mysterious. 
I actually mm -hmm. designed the covers um, myself and just told Nick what I wanted. And he did a great job of putting my ideas um, into perspective. Yeah, and I love that, you know, and, and they're very, um, you use the same font among and between the two covers, the book one and book two. And if that's the pattern, obviously, you're going to go with book three as well. Yes, you're going to love the the. The oh cover of book three. You're gonna love I can't it. wait to see it. I always like uh, now. I tr try not to see them too far advanced before the actual retreat. So when we do mock up cover critique, I can really just see it almost for the first time and have that feeling of oh, this is what it is, and like you know, and then give feedback on it. So thank yeah. you. Very much. So what are doing these books? You know, what has opened up for you, and what are you doing? I mean, we know you have a dance school, and you've got you know, many other things, you know, big events that you host and things like that. But where's your true and a full time job? <laughs> and a full time job. Yeah. Where where does your passion lie with your books and how do you want to be helping people? So I feel like uh, I want to help people to heal through writing uh, or through yeah. coaching as well. And and you know, yeah. we still fight the beliefs that um that you can heal through journaling. I feel mm -hmm. and that's where my passion lies I I feel even when I'm coaching uh um, other women who have been through similar trauma or similar experiences the first mm -hmm. thing I say to them is try writing down your feelings and and I feel mm -hmm. that writing down my feelings was what led me to writing my first book and and I my my journaling turned out actually into a book so I think that's where I want to to lead with with the healing yeah, because really, you you can't delete this out of someone's life. It's always right. going to be there. But you can learn how to, um, uh, I guess, overcome it and um, or feel you know more at peace about the lessons and the blessings that I know that you know abuse is not a blessing, but there is other things that how it makes you stronger. I mean, do you agree with that? How who are you because of what happened to you? Definitely. And I always say that it's sad to say that I ha it was meant to, to be it, because you can't say you, you were meant to be abused or you were meant mm. to go through domestic violence. Yeah. But in a sense, it, it led me to where I am and who I am today and why I'm able to help women because I can't help. I couldn't have helped people if I didn't go through it myself or I didn't no experience it myself, you know? Yeah, you'd be a hypocrite, so in, right? Because, yeah. In a sense, you, you've, it's sad that I had to experience but, that, but I feel um, in a, in, I, I want to use it as a positive to be able to, to help women and talk about it, you know? And that's ultimately the outcome of why you want people to journal and bring out their stories is how can they use their stories as a positive? Because if we do this at a grander scale worldwide, and more people uh, have that self-awareness or feel empowered because of it, um, then we can shift and change the way the future is in the future generations, right? Exactly. Uh, and, and like I said, like, even you can journal, you don't have to, it, it doesn't have to lead into a book, but journaling does really heal. Yeah. Uh, and I'm very, I have a very strong, um, um, how you would say it. like I have a very strong you're a strong uh, for it yeah like you know. yeah I have a strong passion like a like a passion for for journaling because I know that it 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 healed me yeah yeah it does you have your own realizations I wasn't much of a big journal about probably I've been doing it really actively the last 12 months but prior to that I love my diaries and planning so a big planner but um, in terms of sitting through and just talking through your own feelings without having to tell it to someone else, and also I find that journaling, when you feel there's no time or people are busy or whatever to have like those deep, deep and meaningful conversations with them, journaling, you can be kind of unfiltered as well with it, with yourself. Um, and you don't need to, like some things you might feel uncomfortable telling other people, but if you're just telling, telling it to yourself in your journal, then it's you don't have to feel just yourself you can just let it out and it does make you feel better it's, it feels like you're sharing a problem with someone but you're not really <laughs> but you are no exactly and you're clearing your head I feel and 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 like you said it's unfiltered and 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 I try to say 
to people when they're doing their journaling. And I even tell this to, tell this to my kids. Don't even, even if you want to swear and you want to write those swear words in there, write, write what you're feeling in there. And, and I did that when I was journaling and it turned out into that book. And in my book, I actually have explicit descriptions of what had happened because that's what I wrote at the time. And that's what I was feeling at the time. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. What does it um take, like, you know, a lot of people, and I want to explore this a little bit with you, a lot of people are nervous about sharing stories like yours, right? Um, You know, of people who might read them, of being vulnerable, you know, on a global scale, because this is now published and available for everyone to, to check out. You know, how did you get over that? And how do you, like, you know, how do you approach it? Because it is, a lot of people will give up on their book dream because of that. It, I, I'm going to be honest. It was very scary. It's very, it's scary to think that um people are going to read my story. People are going to know that it's me, even though it's written in, in a third party and, and it's written as, um as not, not my story. It's very similar to mine. So, so it was very intimidating at first and it was very scary. And in all honesty, um one of the reasons why I'm I've taken so long for the ungracious daughter to be released it's actually closer to me because now I'm talking about my own family yeah and I'm talking about what had happened in my in my parents home mm. right mm. so it, it is it is scary in the beginning but getting over that um that hump of oh my god everybody's gonna know you know everything about me um it also is very empowering. It's an empowering journey because you're releasing everything. It's almost like a big relief. You, it's, it's a bit of closure to that part of your life, right? Yes, exactly. Mm. And 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 a lot of people say that about 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 um, letting go, like letting go of. And actually, I'm talking about letting go on my Facebook um, for the last four sessions I've got six more sessions going and it's all different um, topics on letting go so letting go by writing letting go of foods that are hurting us letting go of people that are hurting us mm -hmm. so letting go of our built up um um you know trauma oh it does it, it is very empowering yeah yeah, and and th this is what I try to uh, say to my budding authors that come to that initial seminar that we do. And you were there, you know, two and a half years ago, however long it was. And I do remember the early six months of us working together, how many times we had conversations around what will happen, who will say what, how do we do <laughs> it, you know. But the, the great thing was you were willing to listen and get the mentorship and to just have someone to bounce ideas um off of and just to get support and i think that you you i mean you were awesome and and i could i could have counted you on on you and start anytime i felt like i needed to talk about it you were yeah. always there for me and i really do appreciate that and i think that helps a lot and we appreciate you like in entrusting us with this this story and i absolutely love following you and I know you're going to be in my life for forever and ever you know like and I just um love seeing how much you've grown in the confidence as an author okay yes. and how um content you are with what's happening and what's about to come and happen and all that sort of stuff and and that's what I see where you step up and other people are you know I want to be like Sandy I want to you know how did she get to where I am and this is what your coaching and mentoring is all about is showing them those steps because they're probably 10 steps fr from where you started off um off from what would you be yes. your biggest advice for someone wanting to do something similar i would say focus on your strengths mm -hmm. and, and the courage the courage to do it and 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 expect don't expect um society to always stand with you but also expect society's expectation that you are probably not you you're telling uh sinful family secrets or or you you're telling uh things that people might not want to hear um or they don't want to know but stand up for your yourself stand up for your uh your beliefs and 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 delve into yourself and find that strength and that courage and that bravery mm -hmm. and you will find that empowerment 
Yeah, yeah, I love that. And I guess people who've been through uh, sexual abuse, trauma, you know, things like that, they, their self-esteem and confidence probably would be lower than, say, someone who hasn't been through that. So, you know, and if you had the strength to get through what you did go through, you know, That's tap exactly. into that strength and then write your story because it'll just, it'll be the next level of evolution. I always say writing a book is not about your book, but it's about the person you become at the other end of it. You know, does that ring true for you? I mean, I, I know you Oh, my God, definitely. I mean, if you would go back and look at the interview you did with me a year ago yeah. and how timid I was and how um, yeah. scared I was to talk about anything, yes. you know, and, and I would say, look at me now. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to talk about it. I'm not afraid to bring it um, from under the carpet, as we, as we said. Um, yeah. I'm not afraid to share my story. And um, and even though I am I have to write it as a third party, um, it is very similar to mine, and I'm not afraid of talking about it. And one instance that came up, um, I was visiting some family last month in February, mm -hmm. and one of my cousins came up to me, and he said to me, um, I, my heart is breaking for you because you were my favorite cousin and I never knew you were going through that. Why didn't you tell me? Mm. So you. it's, it's yeah, it's coming out in a, in a, in a sense where now I can talk about it with, with my cousins and I can talk about it with my family and not all of them is bashing me or hating me because I'm telling the truth. To be honest with you, I have 99% support. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And this is a tough story. It's a big story that you, you know, you're writing and sharing and all that sort of stuff. So anyone that's in this situation, please, and you've had a couple of comments here, very brave from Debbie and other people are watching and um, being inspired by you. So um, so talk to me, you know, you've done the program now a couple of, well, you've done two retreats. You're about to come to the third one. You're doing it fully and completely every single time. What do you see the benefits? Because sometimes people do the program fully and completely and then the next time I'll just get a publishing package or, you know, um, do it on my own. But then they go so much slower, I find. What do you find the benefit from coming through the three-day program for you to be um, in terms of finishing books? Uh, to me, it, first of all, I did have no clue where to start. So that was one thing that, that, um, that I'm very grateful for. And, and I find like the, the, the biggest thing is the support. Like mm -hmm. if I had to do this on my own, I'd be lost. Yeah. You know, and even now I've done it and I still need help. And I, I still call out to, to everyone. I call out to Babe. I call out to Julie. I call out to you. I need, I need that support. And you guys are there for me. And, and I think that it's just massive. It's a massive thing that you have that behind you yeah and you, know, you stay I, up till you stay up till 3 a.m because that's how like this retreat's gonna run <laughs> for the first two days you know yeah. and and that's commitment you know often people go oh you know it's gonna be late and I go just suck it up it's two days of your life <laughs> it's two days. yeah you, you know catch up your sleep after that but I, it's worth it, it you yeah. stay up and do the whole thing it's worth it and, and and I've done it two times and every time I do it, I'm so excited about it. Like, I can't wait for, for it to happen. I'm looking at my calendar and I'm like, oh my God, it is very exciting. And it is, and, and I've done it twice and I've learned the first time, like, oh my God, the knowledge of like, like I've got, I've gotten so much information. And then the second time I got more information that I might've missed in the first yeah. one, yeah. you know? And you'll yeah. hear it again and I'll bet you you're going to like kind of go walk away with other ideas or other actions that you're going to um, take. Yeah. I love the fact that you make it a commitment and you do utilize it. Um, now that we know, you know, once you've done retreat once, we invite you guys to come and redo it again and again uh, as many times because many people don't just write one book. You're a perfect no. example within three years who have done three books, you know, and on average, you know, that's pretty much what I did. Like, you know, I'm 14, 13 years in, 14 books or whatever. Uh, and I really am due to uh, do another one soon. But, um, but yeah, it, I always, often say, you know, once you come in, you're part of the family and you can reattend and you come to the support calls and you come to the master classes and do all of that sort of stuff so that to make sure you finish. And I love that that's what you do. You turn up to your uh, support calls 
and therefore the books are ready and they're not just just something you talk about that you're in the process with so where can people get your books where can they go so the on gracious daughter um is not out yet it's i'm launching it in june so june 3rd is my first book launch um yes. but they can also pre like pre-purchase it at sandymeck.com there it is and i've just popped it on um on the uh, screen here guys so sandy um for those of you listening to this as audio is s-a-n-d-y and then make is m-a-e-c k.com and here if you uh, click through and you choose the other book the unwanted wife um and you can buy a copy of that and of course the books um are gonna are gonna be available through all your great online resellers sorry my internet's a bit slow i think the other page um but the ungracious order it's currently um sandy's got her first proof copy in hand and it's got lots of little tabs on there sandy of things that you find a little changes that you got to do and then uh, there's the unwanted wife the other page so if you want to directly from sandy go to her website um otherwise you can also look up the unwanted wife on amazon and barnes and noble there it is <laughs> the first copy it's of the unwanted tabs. Yeah. yeah but yeah pre-order it and um the final um copies will be um shipped out and i think you should get both because you kind of story ties in together. Um, and um, I think that way you'll kind of get the full picture. And what's the name? What's the uh, the theme? Well, you already talked about the theme of the third book, but uh, do you want to release the name of it? It's called The Calamitous One. The Calamitous One. I love all these words that she, she pulls out of, <laughs> you know, it's, they're very uh, mysterious and curiosity-driven, Sandy. Um, and, yeah, and we'll be having you with that one. So uh, what's the plan of release of that one within, like, by the end of the year or something along um, those lines? Yes, I, I want to work towards the end of the year. And so it's the, the Calamitous One is actually going to be a little bit more about how that person or the person I'm going to be writing about how it's almost like a failure to launch her life right because because of society and abuse and that kind of stuff and and also um health 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 issues as well because the the main character in in this book had epilepsy mm, so it's gonna be a little bit about that as well yeah <laughs> so it's gonna be it's it's mysterious <laughs> yeah I love it I love it and I like a little bit of mystery about it I love it. And if you can, under this interview, maybe you're just on Facebook when you see it, if you can put the trailers of the two um, of the two books that you did, I'd love for you I to will. share the link so people can sort of check out what I what I was talking about and what I meant. And I really can't wait to have you. It's literally two weeks to go till the May retreat. I'll be releasing this song very soon. I think you're gonna you're gonna love this one. Um, as we as you know, we have songs for every single retreat, and that's what gets us into the the mood of it all and i came up with it i think um as an idea from one of our authors that i met in florida recently from by reading her book at the beach and I, i'm gonna look up this song uh because she talks about that's the one that gets her into the zone and I go, oh never had that one before it's a good one all right we'll lock it in for a treat i love it <laughs> beautiful thank you sandy so much for joining me second time i'm sure in years time we're going to be together again doing another interview for the third book. Um, but if you guys want to check out the previous interview, just go on YouTube and put my name and Sandy's name together and it'll probably come up. And um, I believe through the podcast also, if you put Sandy's name, you'll be able to check out uh, more about The Unwanted Wife, which is uh, was her first book. So thank you again for joining me on a Sunday night for you. Um, and I'm really happy to be back. And everybody go out there and go smash out this week. Bye, guys. See you, Sandy. Thank you.